Hello everybody, welcome to this short video on test-driven design for Neurospine contracts. I'm Dennis, I'm part of the DevRel team here at Pagoda, and I'll be running through how to implement this for JavaScript smart contracts. So let's get to it. So I opened up my terminal here in my projects folder, and we're gonna use this cool Pagoda CLI tool called Create Your App, which will help us with the scaffolding for a project. We're gonna tell we want a TypeScript or JavaScript smart contract. We'll skip the front end for now and we'll call it my demo. What this will do is it will set up the structure of the files and folders and includes testing as well for our project. So while it does that, and it will also install dependencies, which should take a while, I'll speed up the video and I'll resume once we're there. Great, so the project's all set up now and we can start browsing the files inside. So let's go. So here we are now in my demo project. So if we look to the left, we'll see we have our package.json file and our integration test folder containing our testing suite and our contracts folder containing our smart contract code. Specifically, it's in the source folder. It gives us uh, the npx create new app gives us a simple set and get string smart contract as we can see here so it's just one variable that's saved on chain uh yeah and you can uh, change it or uh or get it for the inter integration tests they also live in source we see that we make use of near workspaces that's our key dependency here um what it does is it creates a virtualized version of near blockchain running on the machine running the tests. So first it creates this sandbox server. It deploys the contract. You tell it to deploy in this case, it's this one up here. Uh, the exact configurations are in both of these uh, package.json files. You can have a look uh, um, yourselves by running that command. Um, yeah, so it deploys that contract. And uh, then we pass on to the other test, we pass it on some data, some data you can use as context. Uh, the worker and both accounts created here. So both of these are accounts. And near everything's, uh, every user is pretty much an account. And every account can have one smart contract deployed to it. So the relationship is one to one. Uh, because this is TypeScript, we have to specify both these two when we're passing it on. So we have to specify that there's a, a data container for what we want to save in it and what we're gonna save in it. If it were just JavaScript, we don't need these lines over here. Uh, we're gonna make use of Ava. Uh, Ava is a testing library in uh, JS that allows us to run tests async, uh, which is so in parallel, which is particularly useful if, te if tests take, uh, take a while to run. Most of the time, these tests can take between five and 10 seconds to run. So having them run, run async is very useful. So yeah, if we look closer here, we also see that we're running uh, both in before each and after each hooks. That means that the, this piece of logic runs before every test, and this piece of logic runs after every test. Uh, there's also a general before hook and a general after hook, which means that piece of logic will run before all tests and the other will run after all tests. That's particularly useful if you want to share data between all tests. Uh, like for example, you wanna initialize some specific uh, state of, uh, uh, yeah, of your smart contract. Um, but yeah, I generally don't do this. I start, I start anew, I start afresh, and uh, uh, I create helper methods to, uh, uh, to implement in every, in every test as to obtain the state I want for that particular uh, um, test I'm looking at. So yeah, the NPX create near app gives us already two tests for our very simple get and set string uh, uh, smart contract. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete these two. And if we were to follow TDD by the book, and that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna think about uh, what we want our app to do. We're gonna write tests for it first, and then we're gonna adapt our smart contract code as to match what, our, what we specified in the tests that it should do. So I am thinking 
I want this smart contract to do the same thing it already does, but to allow everybody to interact with it and everybody has their own string. So every account would uh, have their own string. So, uh, and if it, uh, and if nobody uh, has written or a particular account has not written to it yet, it should return a not found error when someone's querying the string for that given account. So should return not found if account ID is not found. And uh, on the other case in our happy path, should save message by account ID and retrieve it by So I'm using GitHub Copilot here, which pretty much gets us everything I'm thinking about. And let's see if it can do it now. Yeah, it gave a good suggestion, I think. Look, yeah, this makes sense. It's, it's saying now unknown, but what I like to do in my tests as well is I like to create a test case user. So we'll do create user Alice. It says, this is proper syntax, so that looks good. We pass Alice as well to our, pre to, our, to our tests and we're fetching Alice again here. And here we'll pass Alice's account ID. I think this is a property, so we don't need to use any brackets after that. Great. So we'll get the result. It should be a not found. This test looks good. Let's see what Git Copilot says here. Message. Okay, it got this wrong. So in this case, Alice has to call the contract. So this is the syntax for it. And uh, yeah, the, the function names are also incorrect, I notice. So it should be get message. And it should be set message. And there we go. Great. So what's happening here is that Alice performs a call to that smart contract and it, uh, it calls that specific function we were, we were going to specify in the smart contract code and it passes in uh, that message as a parameter. You can also pass additional parameters here in the call uh, function, uh, namely the guess, the attached deposit, sign with key, um, but yeah, these are all uh, uh, defaults when you call it like this. So this should be fine for the for the moment. For example, the default gas parameter is 30 teragas when performing it like this. But you can uh, jack it up all the way to the max, which at the moment is 300 teragas in case you have a computationally expensive function. So uh, let's see, line 46, uh, we get a result from contract get message and account ID. Yeah, this looks perfect. So uh, great, our tests are done now. So let's get on to our smart contract code. So here we are with our smart contract code now. If you remember, MPX create near app set us up with a very simple uh, smart contract for getting and setting strings. But we want to make a couple of changes to it. So I'm going to just delete the contents of the functions for now, and we're going to specify our data container, which in this case was greetings. We want to save a bunch of them indexed by account ID. So, and whenever we're going to fetch a greeting, we want to do so by account ID. So that's going to have that's going to have to be an a parameter that we provided. So uh, in TypeScript, we also have to tell what what kind of something this account ID is, which is very simple in this example. It's only a string. Just auto format that. And yeah, this is exactly what we wanted, right? We wanted it to return not found if it's not found else give us the greeting for that account ID. And in this case, um, yeah, we're going to set an account ID by the caller's account ID. So we can get that out the context of the call. So, and we use near for this. Uh, there's a special section in our docs, in docs.near.org, that explains what kind of stuff you can get out of the context. So let, let's just dig in here and we can see a bunch of stuff in here. So there's, uh, in fact, a lot you can get out of it. Um, in our case, we are going to get the, uh, it's not even here perhaps. Nope. No, we're going to get something else. We're going to get uh, a predecessor account ID. This is also explained in the docs. There's a difference between the signer account ID and the predecessor account ID. Uh, namely, the predecessor is a, 
uh, account that originally uh, initiated the transaction. Sometimes you can have an account that initiates a transaction and then another account executes a part of it. And uh, by coincidence, this other account that uh, executes a part of the transaction can also be the most recent one. So if you do this, you're getting the most recent account. And if you do this, you get the one that initiated the call. So uh, that's uh, in short what the difference is. It's explained more in detail in docs.near.org. Also, uh, what you get in docs.near.org is, uh, yeah, everything that uh, you can get out of the context when uh, this, this small piece of logic is being run. Um, uh, yes, we'll such as those two variables. But I think you could also get stuff about the storage. Uh, there's a, a lot of different concepts in here. But yeah, uh, they're all explained in detail uh, over there. So great. So now the contract is doing exactly what we want it to. So uh, we have our greetings. They're indexed by account ID. If it's not found, then until it's not found. And yeah, we can set we can set the message or message string that will be just uh, indexed by exactly that what we want it to be indexed by. So our next step right now is to execute the tests and hopefully they'll pass. So let's see what we get. Okay, so we're back to the terminal now. And what I'm gonna do is run our so if we look closely, we're in the, we're in the uh, we're in the project repository. So I'm going to run the command for running the test, which um, it's further specified in the package.json file. So if you have a look around there, you're going to see what it's uh, the bash commands that it's going to run. So uh, yeah, what it's also telling us here in the output is it's uh, using near SDKJS to um, create a .wasm file with our JavaScript logic. Logic in the end, in a near, uh, what you need to deploy a smart contract to an account is a .wasm file. The .wasm file holds the logic for your smart contract. And as long as you have that, you can deploy it to your account. So you could write your contract code in any language of choice. Right now, there's a good SDKs for both JavaScript and Rust out there, but uh, the community is also uh, working on a couple more. So uh, yeah, there's incredible flexibility there. Um, yeah, so if we look at the outcomes of our tests, uh, they failed. Um, <laughs> But uh, the WASM file was created here, and it was deployed to the localized uh, near blockchain. Um, but yeah, our test failed. This happens all the time. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah, this was our first test case. And it's telling us in the message uh, the method's not being found. So my guess is uh, probably there's something wrong with the function names. So we're back here to our project in VS Code. And if I read our tests here, I see where I see a couple of things actually. We're calling this get message and set message. That's probably different to what we have. Yeah, get greeting and set greeting. This is our smart contract code. So the name of the function does not match. So that doesn't match what we designed in our tests. So uh, yeah, this, this code is wrong. In fact, it should match what we have originally devised here. So let's let's just change the name of the functions. Set message and get message. That's right. And we are supposed to pass in an account ID with this name. So in snake case instead of camel case. So in our interface, we should also do that. So account ID should be this and there we go. And we also pass it in like that. Now it makes much more sense. So I think our smart contract code now matches what we originally designed in our tests. So let's give this one a go and see how it goes. All right. So let's run these tests again and see how we do this time. So we're running NPM tests again, which will create a new WASM file in this case from our smart contract code. We need that to happen because we updated our smart contract and then it will run our test against that updated WASM. So let's see how it goes. I'll speed up the video now and uh, we'll jump to the result. Great, so our test passed and we're now done. We've designed and developed JavaScript smart contract for near using TDD. So, yay. So let's wrap it up. So 
we've done the entire cycle. Uh, we started with a blank project. We thought about our functionality. Then we started with the tests that made our requirements concrete and set our uh, design in code. Then we made our smart contract code. We ran our tests. They failed. Uh, we worked through the errors and now everything works. So that really is the entire spectrum within 15 minutes. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, there are a couple of more things I'd like to share. Uh, one of them is this link. So near.dev is going to take you to a site uh, that has a few smart contract uh, examples for you guys to have a look through. By all means, uh, feel inspired. Have a look around. I've implemented a lot of the tests uh, NCI for these examples. And if you think it can be done better, by all means, also open up a PR that, that would make me very happy. Um, yeah, so uh, feel free to explore in the adventure around. Uh, we are also available on a Discord server. So if you follow this link, that will be an a invite for a Discord server. We have a dedicated dev support chat where you can ask uh, questions on uh, developing on Near. And we also host office hours both in the America's time zones and in the Europe time zones. So you can find us there live and ask us, ask us, ask us questions there live as well. So uh, also, by all means, feel free. Uh, yeah, so once again, thank you guys very much. Uh, I hope uh, uh, this, will be, this will mean a lot for you and your development, and you'll be able to uh, uh, improve your uh, development cycles uh, as I have been able to uh, with the help of these libraries and uh, this way of approaching uh, development. Um, and yeah, maybe see you next time.